32. Wait, I'm off size. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I'm Zach from MNF, and today I'm speaking with Allie Gilbert Weingroff, and she's a lifestyle and hormone optimization coach that knows a lot about guys and how their bodies work, of course. Today we're going to cover testosterone levels and why they're on the decline worldwide, and therapies and strategies to combat low T. And I think we do it all without making one sex joke. Hooray for us! Today's show is generously sponsored by GNC. From the number one selling lit pre-workout to the game-changing Burn MF, Beyond Raw formulas are made to make a real difference. And with the explosive flavors like Jolly Rancher Watermelon and Green Apple, Gummy Worm and Iced Tea Lemonade, you'll keep coming back for more. So get to GNC or GNC.com and go beyond the fire with Beyond Raw. Do you think most people know that there's a testosterone issue going on worldwide? No. Why not? Because the range that is made to be, quote, normal in guys keeps going lower and lower. How come? Because of issues with our society's um, laziness. So we're less healthy than we've been in decades. And so the obesity epidemic, which is kind of like a epidemic aligned with the testosterone epidemic causes people to be not as hormonally optimized and also the onslaught of things in our environment, our quality of food, all these things are kind of like an amalgamation of what is against the male human race. And listen to that word. Um, I'm amalgamation. I'm catching up on it. Um, okay. So we're, we're not as healthy as we were. We keep getting unhealthier. Uh, we're eating crappier foods. And is it just that we're eating foods that are worse for us or the nutritional value of these foods are deteriorating or eroding? Uh, maybe are we using too many pesticides or uh, I don't know. You tell, you tell me, you know, you, this is what you, you know, deep dive in all the time. Whereas I'm trying to learn about this from the ground up from you. So there are pesticides that we use in the U.S. that are illegal in Europe, one of those being atrazine and then glyphosate, which most people know what glyphosate is or Roundup, which is used in, on a lot of farms. And so there's, um, I guess you would say like a hierarchy of, of foods that you would want to eat if you are budgeting what to spend your money on when it comes to organic and local and all that, because food's expensive, right? And not everybody can afford local and organic. And we've come to realize that the way our agricultural system works is it might not even matter as much as if it's the farm next door and you know the farmer and you know what they're doing with their cattle and their plants and all that stuff. So the quality and, and like the um, nutritional value, I think both have deteriorated. And I think fast food being as accessible as it is makes that problem even worse. And if you think about like the last year, you know, so many people were using Uber Eats and Grubhub and all that stuff. We used to have to like get in the car and go to the store and get all this stuff. Now you just press a button and that it all comes to you alcohol, bad food, fast food, a husband, a wife, anything you want can be delivered to you. Yeah, that's true. Those are two different costs though, I think, um, between the husband and wife and the fast food, but I don't know. <laughs> I have to, maybe I'll research that. Um, all right. So what, what's the, uh, what's the big deal though? Okay. Right. So testosterone levels are plummeting. So what, what does that mean for humanity or guys in general or, um, you know, just what, what's the, what's the big deal? Why should people care? Well, if we look at, um, having optimal testosterone levels helps sperm production and fertility and saving fertility for the future. So there is a doctor out there, Shanna Swan. She wrote a book called countdown, which is both like terrifying and amazing. Um, where she goes into a lot of the research on fertility in both men and women, but in sperm production in men, the 
the uh, what's it called, like landmark or leading study that she did in 2017 had predicted men to be infertile by the year 2048. So that's not too far away. Like before 2020, it seemed like, okay, yeah, that's far away. But now it's like, yo, 2048 is not that far away. Right. No, yeah, it's not that far away. Um, well, actually, I don't know if, if it's anything like if things move as slow as 2020 felt like if it moved, um, then it will be like an eternity because that was the worst year I felt like in a long, long time. Um, yeah, that was a blur. A slow yeah, yeah. blur. <laughs> yeah, that was no good. I mean, I, I'm not going to say 2021 has been like a gym, but, uh, you know, it's been right. Do you, do you remember the days that you and I spent on on like apps like this and it seemed like the days were just endless? Yes. They never ended and it was like multiple days a week. We didn't even know what day of the week it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's true. That was when um yeah, I first moved and mm -hmm. uh, uh I was getting ready for kid number 2 and was just sweating constantly, kind of like I am right now. Um it's so hot today. It's just misery. <laughs> It feels so long ago, but it really wasn't. It wasn't that long ago, but um, it does feel, I mean, because things have changed so drastically. I mean, you're not even on, you know, you were right around the corner at that point. Now you're in Florida. Yeah, it's hot down here too. Yeah. Um, do you go to the beach a lot? No, actually, I've only been like twice. <laughs> I went more when I was in Greenwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So basically guys are going to have no sperm in the next 15, 20 years or whatever. Um, not terrific at math, but, um, I feel like by that point, there's going to be something to combat this rather than having people change, because as we've seen, people don't really love to change their habits. Um, no. even if it's good for them, uh, it's, I feel like they're just going to have some pill or some, or maybe everybody will be on TRT. I, I don't know. What do you What do you think? What do you think is going to be the 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 cure here, or or the the path out of here? You know, it's funny because I've I've discussed this with colleagues of mine, um, mine who are a lot smaller than me in this realm, and I consider them to be pretty deep into a lot of the research coming out surrounding this. And I asked, I said, you know, my friend Dave Lee, I was like, dude, do you think that Basically, it will turn into men being on TRT early age, like 21, 22, all that stuff. And he thought, yeah, he thought that that was what our future would look like. And either we would have to create a way for men to be able to freeze sperm in an economical way, mm -hmm. or there's got to be like a, you know, come to Jesus moment of, of our um, health and how we view our health to be able to combat this, but it's tough because it's like, you know, everyone can argue how like our ozone is deteriorating and climate change is happening. And, and, you know, pandemic was like a natural disaster, what, whatever people want to argue and think and conspiracy and all that stuff is okay. But still, we're still dealing with a lot of these issues that are threatening our existence and the continuation of procreation because there's more and more fertility issues with both men and women than there ever have been. And it used to be that, that they would think it was the women and remember like women would just get checked and guys would kind of like, it wouldn't be until like the last minute, like, Hey, let's check your sperm quality, you know, your motility, stuff like that, which you can do now, like at home, they have at home tests and stuff for guys. And I know that's a tangent, but Ultimately, yeah, I think that we're we're looking at already lower testosterone levels in boys who are in their 20s. And it, it's a problem. It, it's a problem. Nobody has a solution yet. It's more kind of what can we do to prevent this? So let's talk about the differences between somebody that has regular to, you know, um, optimal levels of testosterone and somebody who does not. So what is it that um, that person would feel like, say they're, they're optimal, say they're doing all the right things or, or whatever, what are they going to feel like? And what is the person that's, uh, struggling going to feel like? So most guys who, who have what I would say optimized levels, whether they're on testosterone replacement or not, 
if they naturally have higher levels, they usually have good energy in the gym, meaning they have motivation to train. And there's a lot of like parallels to this because you could have optimized testosterone, but then you don't sleep enough. You don't eat enough, blah, blah, blah. But I would consider all of that part of having optimal hormones, right? So it's a very small percentage of people. So somebody who has more optimal levels of testosterone will put on muscle a little bit more easily. will have more drive, more clarity, more focus. Like, I guess you can call it more vitality. Um, they don't necessarily have like the lulls and motivation and drive that a lot of men will experience. And when men's levels take a nosedive, they tend to accumulate body fat in places that they maybe didn't notice. They don't have the same drive to do things. And when I say that as it pertains to men, it's more like the, it's like the winning hormone for guys, like the decisive action, the protector, you know, the mass, the the definition of what we would say would be masculine. That kind of gets lost and men find themselves lack of motivation to do stuff, whether it's work related, family related in the gym, you know, they have this brain fog. They may feel depressed because low T levels tend to correlate highly with symptoms of depression. So a lot of those symptoms can find a resolution with the proper treatment, whether that's getting lifestyle in order, getting nutrition in order, going on hormone replacement, all of that. But that's, ten, that's usually what people will experience if their levels take to ten, tend to take this nosedive that a lot of guys' levels have. And it can be very confusing when that average level on labs keeps getting lower and lower by these companies because more men are showing up with lower levels. So a guy your age who used to have levels in like, you know, 900 plus now is more like the three and four hundreds. Okay. So that's another question. So do you got to go to a doctor to figure this out? Are at-home tests reliable? Um, are there certain types of tests that, that you suggest or that would be recommended uh, that are more accurate than others? So you know, the way to find out obviously your, your testosterone levels, in addition to some other very important hormones, you'd have to go to a doctor that specializes in hormone optimization does not necessarily mean, excuse me, that they're going to put you on hormone replacement. But usually if you go to a GP, you're not going to necessarily get the right labs. There are a lot of tests online that you can order that are reliable, depending on what state you live, you live in some States don't allow it. Um, but are you talking about like an endocrinologist? Like, are you talking about going to, to that person? Or are you talking about, um, like what specific doctor are you talking about? And then do you take those last, say you do the test at home. Do you just take those, the, you know, the results to that person and aren't they going to want to run their own tests? So aren't you going to end up doing two? Mm, it, it depends. Um, there's a lot of times where you can do your own labs and bring it to a specialist. And that specialist in my mind would be like, you know, anti-aging, I think is kind of a gimmicky word, but that kind of is really the umbrella that this individual would fall under is anti-aging because preventative type of care is usually the out-of-pocket cash-based type of um, treatments and protocols that you're looking for. None of this type of stuff is covered by insurance. Your insurance doesn't care what your testosterone levels are really. So you can bring those. And if the labs are not complete enough, then maybe a practitioner might want to run their own. It depends by practitioner and, and what they want to see. But regardless of what the numbers say, it's still going to come down to symptom resolution. How are you feeling? Because you could have testosterone levels that are sky high and still feel like crap. So we have to know why we have to figure that out. And a lot of, you know, like I mentioned before, sleep, energy, you know, uh, nutrition, lifestyle, all that stuff that gets so overlooked because it's so simple, but is so important still has to, you know, come into consideration as to, all right, why are testosterone levels low if they're low? How long until someone bounces back, right? So someone has horrible diet, their testosterone is 
you know, just rock bottom. They feel like shit. How they make these changes. Um, how long until they feel a difference or, you know, is it just, there may be a point of no return where they do have to go to the doctor. And then once they do get on TRT, right. Testosterone replacement therapy, you got to stay on it, right. You cannot just jump on it and then jump off because you're going to go back down to whatever your baseline was. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people don't know that it's a for life thing. So, um, how long would, would it take someone to feel better? It's kind of a very subjective thing because a lot of people like right away, they change their habits, that whole, you know, nocebo effect or placebo effect can come into play. Awesome. Because that will just carry them into continuing these habits because habit change is exceptionally hard. So if we get them to change their lifestyle, eat enough, train the right way, they very well could raise their levels a good amount in the course of a few months. It wouldn't be overnight, but they may feel different overnight with these, the onset of the habit change that I don't, I have no problem with, but it could take a while. Now, are those changes, things that you're necessarily going to feel? I would say you won't feel necessarily a direct bump in your testosterone. You won't go from like, I feel more manly, like within a couple of weeks, you just might find that you're more apt to trying newer things or taking risks, or maybe you have a little bit more motivation to do stuff that could very well be a sign that you, you are benefiting from the elevation of your testosterone levels naturally. It won't get to the super physiological level and it probably won't get to the levels as a teenager, but you could definitely see a little bump in it for sure. Um, do you want to talk about, are we able to talk about your, your experience or no? Like the fact that um, you're, you know, taking testosterone and why you decided to take it and how it's changed your, you know, well-being or your life. Yeah. Let's do so, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on TRT uh, mostly because I want to be one of the bros and be able to uh, understand what my guys go through. No. It, it, that is part of it, honestly. Um, but even as a fitness professional, somebody who does lift the weights and eats the things and all this stuff, my testosterone levels have always been lower and it drives me nuts. And I sleep really well. Like I'm one of those people where I'll do everything right. I really don't drink a lot of alcohol. Like it, it, it's, it's crazy that you would think someone who does the right things and still ends up with lower levels, but this is extremely common. Last year, I tried the cream, didn't really like it, which, why not? you know, it, it, it's known to not have the best absorption rate for women. And it gave me a lot of water retention. So, um, so, the, so the, absorption, the, the absorption rate is different between men and women when it comes to that? The, the type of, it's known normally, like, it obviously it depends on where you're putting it. So I put it under my arms and there's, areas that you can put with thinner skin if you want, like guys put it on, if they put it on their scrotum, it's going to get more absorbed than it would say on your arm. Is it tangle? Like, 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 like icy hot or anything? Or is it no? No. <laughs> no, you don't feel it. It's like roll on deodorant or whatever. Um, Man, can, but, you go, can you go overboard with it? Cause I, I mean, if it's just fine and you're just kind of going with it, I don't know. You probably, I mean, you could, because like the dosage is like, you know, one click. Okay. So what is one click? Like, is it a full click or is it like a half little click? A little bit comes out. Like, you know, it's not really streamlined. A lot of women do well on it. A lot don't. I mean, it's all individual. It, it was more because I didn't want to do injections because when I inject, no matter what size needle, I just get a sight reaction. So like, which means like, it looks like a mosquito bite in the area that you inject. So I decided I didn't care about that. I switched to injections actually three weeks ago. Okay. So, how's that been working? And I like it a lot better. So I feel like my moves, my mood has improved a little bit. Not that I was sad or whatever. It's just more, you feel yeah. like a, just a mean jerk all the time to people. Yeah. I'm such a bitch, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, but my, I'm curious, uh, but, uh, but I do, I want to jump into that a little bit because I'm curious in that, you know, you, Every time we've interacted, you've been an upbeat and positive person, but clearly when you're saying that you were experiencing something, there was, you must have not 
felt that way, or maybe, maybe you did, I don't know, or maybe your husband will have a different, you know, story to tell in that sense. But like, is it just when you're in public or you're meeting people or you're being professional, you have to put that mask on or you have to flip on the switch and be on. And yet once somebody leaves, you're just like, Oh God. Like, <laughs> Cause that's the way I, that's the way I get. I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. The minute this shuts down, I'm just going to be like, Oh, you know what? Like, I'm going to feel overwhelmed and I'm probably going to bite my nails and I'm going to be, you know, irritable. And then I'm going to see my wife and I'm going to be like, cannot take it out on her, obviously. Um, so I have to get back on. So I don't know um, if that's something that you have dealt with or you were dealing with, or if, if I'm just being insane here. No, first of all, you're not being insane. That, that, that's like, I think that that comes from um, also uh, like you have your periods of time where you, you can be very introverted. Yeah. And I think that when, when introverts have to become extroverted, it, it's very taxing, like emotionally and physically and all that. And then you just, you need your time alone. Oh, it's exhausting. Yeah. Like, and yeah. that's, yeah. I mean, when I have to go and be on in front of a bunch of people, it is like, it's like a game. It's like game day. Like, it's like, you know, okay, whew, come on, let's do it. Like, and then it's like afterward, I'm just like, like the minute I'm there, like 10 minutes in, I'm like, how much longer? Like, <laughs> can we go? <laughs> like, like a great example of that. Like, so in July, I did my first live talk, I would say in a year, right? I did, okay. I did two, two talks, three, no, I'm sorry, three in two days. So two of them were like an hour. One of them was two hours and they're all on testosterone and metabolism and stuff. And so like, I treat talks like game day, like I'm listening to Drake, I'm getting pumped up, like blah, blah, blah. And then you have this adrenaline dump and you're on this high from, from, you know, giving all this fun info, but after when you come off stage, there's a period of time where you're interacting with people and they come up to you and they ask questions for the next like two or three days or however long you're present at this conference. That is what taxes me because it's a lot of energy that you're giving to others. And it's also fun. And when I'm having fun and then giving a lot of energy and then I'm like, whoo, like, wow. Like, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I, I, definitions I of fun it. are different. <laughs> Although now that, now that I mentioned it, I'm like, what is fun? I don't know. Um, I don't know what's fun to me anymore. It's, it's been, I feel like I've been locked up. Like I went out with my wife um, for the first time. We went out to dinner for the first time. And I think it was 18 months. Wow. Yeah. And we sat outside, you know, we're still call us kooks or whatever, but we still do. We're still very diligent about how we're treat, you know, treating COVID because we have two young kids, um, you know, one's 10 months old. Uh, so obviously like, especially now with, with these variants, like we're just a little bit, we're just being cautious still, uh, yeah. because you know, it's, we like our kids shockingly. I mean, <laughs> I, and, um, so yeah, but it was really weird to go out. Like, and I will say this, like, I had a great time. Like I, I enjoy being with her obviously, but it was like, 6 45 and i'm looking at my watch like oh my god I cannot wait to go to bed like, uh -huh. and it's how much that's how fun i am um that's fun i guess but i can relate to that <laughs> but okay but in terms of exercise and fitness right so you know because i've taken a testosterone test and i once in 2014 i was on the low side of normal and i took one not too long ago and i can't remember if it was lower, I think it was okay. It was fine. You know, it wasn't like, you know, like going to be winning any awards or anything, but it was fine. Uh, but it's like, I'm still tired all the time. And I know we've talked about this offline before about how it could possibly be because of medications. Um, you know, I don't sleep very well. There are times where, yeah, I'm definitely introverted. There's times where I stress eat and I certainly stress drink. I've gotten much better about it specifically as the pandemic has dragged on and I've kind of gotten my head on straight a little bit better, but, um, you know, those things are most likely driving down my numbers, right. And we'll use, I'll just speak personally on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm not yet ready to go to TRT because I still have young kids. I don't want to have anything like cr the cream. I don't want to touch my kids and with creamy, creamy testosterone hands. I don't know if I'm ready for injections yet specifically because, um, yeah, it's like, I know it's an ongoing expense that I won't be able to just dive off of. But if I was on that, 
you know, and I'm, I'm trying to, to, to balance the, the spreadsheet here in terms of how much I'm spending on medications for, for, for other ailments that, that may have that caused issues with sleep and stuff like that. You know, we've talked about that with concentration and, and things. Um, the cost for TRT to the cost of those, what would that be per month? Like what is TRT going to cost, you know, a handsome young blonde guy like myself? Um, I, I'm not sure it differentiates it between ugly people or handsome people. It should, so no, because that was, I have to I'm look into make, that. I was going to say, I feel like it would, it'd be, I'm, I'm a very specific, you know, like I, I'm a, an acquired taste. So I, just, <laughs> I have to shell out a lot at first. And then uh, maybe after a while, they'd pity me and be like, well, you can. <laughs> Guys this. with beards or without. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just pure laziness. I, I meant yeah. to shave. I forgot. <laughs> you know, I would say like, I, if I had to put a price tag on, on a yearly expense as to everything together, hormone, like taking care of your hormone optimization, syringes, needle, like whatever, supplies, medication, maybe like, you know, $2,000 a year, give or take. Now, when it's monthly, it depends on the practitioner. Some medical clinics have a monthly fee of like a hundred to $200 where you get your testosterone, you get your needles, you get your alcohol swabs, which I don't think anyone uses. And then, you know, you get it all sent to you monthly. Other practitioners, you like, what's that? I don't you, use it. No. no. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have site reactions. <laughs> I, it's just too much. It's too long. It's too long a process. Like I'm done. Um, so other practitioners, they'll, they'll let you use your insurance, with, which some insurances will cover it. Some insurances won't. It obviously is dependent. You got to you know inquire with your insurance company and it depends on what your levels are because you can actually qualify for testosterone replacement if your levels are literally that low. That's why they keep lowering it because it's also making it harder for people to obtain it through insurance. So I've seen where people pay... $20 a month. I've seen people $60 or like a hundred dollars a month. So okay. it's so variable, but I would say rough expense. That's what you would be looking at monthly. And then with labs and all that other stuff, maybe up to 2000 a year, which if you look at it, as you were saying, if you're taking other medications to kind of facilitate some of the symptoms that you're experiencing because of low testosterone, it could actually end up balancing out. I had a good conversation about this with one of my clients who's a military veteran, and he was talking about the veterans starter pack that they give out at the VA, which you get like Ambien, you get Adderall, you get uh, like Zoloft, you get like basically every category of symptom you get a pill for. When in turn, a lot of those symptoms can be alleviated through testing hormones because depression and PTSD, anxiety, a lot of those things can be relieved when you have optimal testosterone and stuff like that. So I think that's a great point that you said is when you're looking at the cost of medications and even, you know, if you're drinking like a ton of pre-workout to stay awake and stuff like that, you know, it could warrant an inventory of what's really going on in your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What is going on in your life? <laughs> so sit and just, and just wonder. So like for me with the injections, like it wasn't that I felt the significant like drop in mood or sex drive or anything. And I also, I'll preface it with, I, I spent a good, I would say five, four to five months treating my wedding like a competition. I dieted very hard. I trained really hard. So yeah. I automatically had that drop in energy and I was fatigued a lot and whatever. So testosterone helps with the recovery of that. And remember replacement doses is different than if you are taking super physiological for a physique show or some other reason, right. most of my men who are on testosterone by physically looking at them, you would not think, Oh my God, they're on testosterone because it's replacement dose. It's you, men. Uh, call them my men, huh? My men. I have a, I have a, my harem <laughs> of men. <laughs> it's funny because like that or like when I'm lecturing, I'll I'll say like we as in like I'm one of you, like 
our scrotum cannot, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, right. just, go with it. just go with it, guys. Cause I consider myself one of you, you know, <laughs> like going through everything the way you're going, like, you know, I get men's health products sent to me to clean my ball sack and like, you know, shave and stuff. And hey, look, I mean, look, everybody could use a, a sack cleaning. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, but, but why, obviously, like if you're somebody that specializes in this area, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you be interested in what's new? And, and if you, even if you can't test it out per se, like you can look at what it is, how it works, the ingredients and know whether it's, worth the investment or not. Um, so it makes sense. But yeah, I mean, look, you can, you can say our scrotum anytime to me and I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm glad because <laughs> I, I feel then more, more part of you guys. Like I have, I have a friend who specializes in women's health and he's a guy and he says the same thing. And, and then he's like, Oh, I'm saying we, but like, I don't even notice. So I don't think guys even notice where I'm like, yeah, if we have test levels of this and we have yeah. this, I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't because I'm, I'm, if I'm showing up to a discussion where, where you are, I, I want you to relate to me. You know, I, I don't want to have somebody that's going to talk at me. Uh, I want someone to, to, talking to me um, and, and un, you know, understanding what I'm going through. Um, again, I don't necessarily think it comes to having all the equipment. I think it comes to just understanding how things operate and how things break down and how to rebuild them, which you do. Um, and that's why I thought that you'd be somebody, you know, to talk about, you know, testosterone with. And I think that we could definitely pick this up again. I think we should. Um, I think for now we could wrap it. Yeah. I think that's a good start. Yeah. I mean, we can keep going at any time. Uh, but I think right there is solid. I mean, I can edit this, this stuff out, but like, yeah, I mean, look, we can, I think this is interesting. It was fun. Um, I hope you had fun. No, oh, yeah, I love it. I miss this. <laughs> Me too. Listen, we can do it anytime you want. Like, um, you're the best, uh, you know, and I, let me just wrap it up and then I'm going to stop recording and I'll kind of tell you what's going on. But um, okay. so, yeah, how can, so first, I guess, let people know how they can get in touch with you um, on the social digital worldwide web media slide in the dms you can you guys can follow me on instagram is where i do a lot of my interacting and post most of my content at the ali gilbert not to be confused with the ali gilbert the musician in the uk which i get flagged on google alerts all the time but that's where you can find me and how's, that's where how, how's your singing voice horrible oh uh. <laughs> But yeah, hit me up there. I would love to talk about anything. That that's usually where most guys ask their questions because a lot of the stuff is very sensitive. So, and you know, maybe what we can do is um, maybe we can get people to submit some stuff anonymously because I know there are questions people have that they're a little embarrassed to ask, especially if it's you know in publicly. And I'll ask for them. Uh, I'm happy to do that. I will. I'm happy to just uh, to take the the bullet on that one for <laughs> such a good guy <laughs> all right well thanks let's pick this up again um and you know we talked about the problems maybe next time we can talk about uh more of the like the sexual dysfunction side of things i know you hate that word dysfunction but uh i forgot what you use so i just went with it i forgot what i used too i like it we'll go with it all right thanks ali <laughs> Today's show is generously sponsored by GNC. From the number one selling lit pre-workout to the game-changing Burn MF, Beyond Raw formulas are made to make a real difference. And with the explosive flavors like Jolly Rancher Watermelon and Green Apple, Gummy Worm and Iced Tea Lemonade, you'll keep coming back for more. So get to GNC or GNC.com and go beyond the fire with Beyond Raw.